Okay, here is a lesson on solving radical equations. Now remember that a radical equation is a, an equation that has a variable in a radicand or has a variable with a rational exponent. So I'm going to just run through this review as part of the lesson with you just to kind of bring some things from the back to the front of your memory and then we'll do several examples together. Um, multiplicative inverse. Multiplicative inverse is the fraction that I would multiply by to equal 1. So I'm looking for the, the fraction that I would multiply by to get 1. Well, that is the reciprocal of whatever I'm looking for. So 3 fourths times some number is going to equal 1 over 1. Well, the way that that's going to work is if I multiply by the reciprocal, so flip it over, 3 times 4 is 12, and 4 times 3 is 12. Well, 12 over 12 is 1 over 1, or 1. That's what it would reduce to. So the multiplicative inverse is the reciprocal. So you can use that in a case like number 2 to solve. So in order to get x by itself, we would get rid of 2 thirds by multiplying both sides by the multiplicative inverse, 3 halves. So if I multiply both sides by that number, these two actually cancel because they go to 1. And 1 times x is just x, so now I have x equals, and then 3 halves times 6 over 1, top times the top's 18, bottom times the bottom's 2, 18 over 2 reduces to 9. So that's how I could solve using the multiplicative inverse. Also, just a quick reminder, rewriting a radical as a rational exponent, the Base is the large number underneath the radicand, and then the power on that is then divided by the root. So this is how I would change from a radical to an expression with a rational exponent. Remember that rational means fraction. Okay, now you could pause your screen to get those examples down or to make sure you have that, or even rewind if I was speaking a little bit too fast the first time. Now I'm going to run through some examples with you. Now, a lot of you guys in number one, you look at that square root and you think, well, how do I get rid of the square root? I would just square it. But I want to work it at, with a rational exponent just so you could see the multiplicative inverse um, at work. So first things first, I'm going to isolate the radical by subtracting two from both sides. And that's going to give me the square root is equal to four. And now I'm going to rewrite this with a rational exponent. Now what's incredibly important about this is making sure that the entire radicand is included. So I can rewrite as 3x minus 2 all to the, now remember this is to the first power and the root, the understood root is 2 there. So to the 1 half power equals 4. Now in order to get rid of that fraction exponent, I am going to raise it to the reciprocal power, because when you raise powers to powers, you multiply. Let me show you what I mean. 3 squared to the third power is the same thing as 3 to the 2 times 3 power, or 3 to the sixth. So using that idea, I can raise to the reciprocal power in order to cancel out the exponent. Let me show you what I mean. 3x minus 2 to the 1 half power. I'm going to raise both sides to the reciprocal, which is 2 over 1 or 2. Make sure you do both sides so that everything stays equal. And these two, when you multiply powers, 1 half times 2 is 1. So that's not there anymore because 1's not going to affect my problem. And then I'm left with 16 on the right side. And now I'm just going to solve Add 2 to both sides, 3x is equal to 18, divide both sides by 3, and x is equal to 6. X. All right, now we're going to do this process with number 2. Okay, so on number 2, what I would love to do is convince you that I want to isolate the portion of this problem that is attached to that exponent that I ultimately want to get rid of. So in order to do that, I've got to make this 2 right here go away. So I've got to do the inverse operation. Well, right now, 2 jammed up next to it means multiply by 2. So how do I unmultiply? I'm going to need to divide. 
So I'll divide both sides by 2, and I've got x minus 2 to the 2 thirds power equals 25. All right, now I'm going to rewrite the problem and use a little bit bigger workspace. All right, so x minus 2 to the 2 thirds power equals 25. And now I've isolated the portion of this equation that had the rational exponent attached to it. And in order to get rid of that rational exponent, just like, like we did on the previous example, we're going to raise it to the reciprocal power. The more you can practice saying that, raised to the reciprocal power, the more you'll be able to say it and remember to do it. So the reciprocal of 2 thirds is 3 halves. And if I raise the left side to 3 halves, I've got to stay consistent and raise the right side to 3 halves. All right, these two cancel each other out because they multiply and give you 1. So it's no longer a factor. And 25 to the 3 halves now that's something you might have to type, type into your calculator to get what that is. So I'm going to grab my calculator. And when I typed it into my calculator, 25 to the 3 halves power is 125. Now I can add 2 to both sides to isolate my variable. And x is equal to 127. Now a problem like number 3 that has a square root on both sides well, so the nice thing about this is what I would do to get rid of the square root on the left, I actually would do the same thing to the right, and so it's kind of working together. All right, so how would I get rid of a square root? Well, I could square it, or I can look at this as 3x to the 1 half power equals x plus 6 to the 1 half power. So how would I get rid of those? I would raise both sides to the reciprocal power, so I would do... 3x to the 1 half would then be raised to the second power, and x plus 6 to the 1 half would also be raised to that same exact power, and that works the same on both because they had the same radical, and now 3x is equal to x plus 6, subtract x from both sides, 2x is equal to 6, divide both sides by 2, in order to isolate the variable, x is equal to 3. Okay, on number four, I want to isolate the radical, so I go ahead and I add three to both sides right away, and I get the cube root of 2x minus 1 is equal to positive 3. Now, I need to look at that the same as 2x minus 1 to the 1 third power, as this root is the same as dividing the power that's underneath the radical by that root. So, that is the same 2x, the cube root of 2x minus 1 is the same as 2x minus 1 to the 1 third power. Okay, now in order to get rid of the 1 third, I'm going to raise the reciprocal power like I've been doing. And the reciprocal of 1 third is 3. Raise both sides to the third so that I can keep everything equal. These cancel because they multiply to give me 1. 2x minus 1 is equal to 3 to the third, which is 27. Add 1 to both sides. 2x is equal to 28, divide both sides by 2, x is equal to 14. Problem like number 5, we're going to go ahead and isolate the radical by adding 3 to both sides. Now I've got 3 times the 4th root of 2x is equal to 12. And now in order to get the radical by itself, I need to go ahead and get rid of this 3 here. So I will go ahead and divide both sides by 3. Now that's going to give me the 4th root of 2x is equal to 4. Now I'm going to convert to a rational exponent. So I'm going to divide both sides by 256, and x is equal to 128. Okay, we're going to finish up with something a little bit complicated with number 7 and number 8. First, number 7, we're going to end up with a variable on both sides of the equation. So that's going to be a little bit challenging, but we'll walk through it step by step. First things first, I want to isolate the radical. Subtract 5 from both sides. Square root of x minus 3 is equal to x minus 5. Now, I'm already thinking in terms of raising both sides to the second power in order to get rid of the radical. So I'm going to do that. Both sides, square root of x minus 3 and x minus 5, they're both going to get squared in order to make these cancel out. So now I've got x minus 3 equals, but then I've got to be very careful that x minus 5 we remember that x minus 5 squared 
is x minus 5 times x minus 5. Now I'm going to have to do double distribution or FOIL in order to figure out what the product of those two binomials are. So x minus 3 stays the same, it's just hanging out waiting, but x times x is x squared, x times negative 5 is negative 5x, negative 5 times x is negative 5x, and negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Look to combine like terms right here in the middle term. x minus 3 is equal to x squared, x squared minus 10x plus 25. Now I want to set it equal to 0. So I want to subtract x from both sides. And I want to add 3 to both sides in order to get all of these on the same side. And I can solve like a normal quadratic. So cancel and cancel. 0 is equal to x squared minus 11x plus 28. And now I'm looking to solve this how I would solve any other quadratic, which, you know, if you prefer factoring, you could factor. If you prefer completing the square, you could do that. When the numbers get to be this size, I, def I definitely default to the quadratic formula. Keep in mind that the quadratic formula is the opposite of b plus or minus square root, b squared minus 4ac, all of that's over 2a, and remember that a, b, and c are the coefficients of this equation. So x is equal to the opposite of b, which is negative 11. So that would be positive 11 plus or minus the square root. Negative 11, b squared, minus 4 times the a value 1 and the c value 28. All of that's over 2 times the a value 1. I went ahead and simplified the discriminant, and I got 9 underneath the radical after I simplified there. And so now I want to take the square root of 9, and I've got 11 plus or minus 3 over 2, and that could split me into my two scenarios, 11 plus 3 over 2 and 11 minus 3 over 2. 11 plus 3 is 14, divided by 2 is 7, 11 minus 3 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. So my two answers here are 7 and 4 as far as x is concerned. Quick note on number 7 is that we need to check for extraneous solutions. Keep in mind that our answers were x equals 7 and x equals 4. So if for some reason I go to substitute one of these in for x and I get a negative number underneath this radical, that's going to give me a non-real answer and then would not be a solution to this quadratic equation. So a real quick check, 7 minus 3 is 4, that's a positive number. 4 minus 3 is 1, that's a positive number. So I want to double check that those first and foremost don't give me a negative underneath that radical. If I continued out with my 7, the square root of 7 minus 3 plus 5 equals 7 because I've plugged in that 7 for x. I want to make sure that the square root of 4 plus 5 is equal to 7. 2 plus 5 is equal to 7, and that works out. The next one would be the square root of 4 minus 3 plus 5 equals 4. The square root of 4 minus 3 would be the square root of 1, and the square root of 1 is 1 plus 5 equals 4. And so right here, 1 plus 5 is 6, and that is not equal to 4. Therefore, that is an extraneous solution and therefore we only have 7 as our answer. Okay, we're almost out of time. I want to do one final example with you, number 8. What I want to do real quick is to uh, get these two um, expressions on separate sides of the equation. So I'm going to add 3x plus 4 to the 1 4th power on both sides in order to get these two binomials onto separate sides of the equation. So I'll go ahead and do that, and now I've got 2x plus 1 to the 1 half power equals 3x plus 4 to the 1 fourth power. Now, what we've been doing is we've been raising both sides to the reciprocal power in order to get rid of the fraction exponent. So if I focus on the left side, the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. So that means I'm going to first try to get rid of the 1 half, and then I'm going to try to get rid of the 1 fourth. So by trying to get rid of the 1 half, that means I'm going to raise both sides to the second power. So that means 3x plus 4 to the 1 fourth will get raised to the second power. 
these cancel, and I've just got my 2x plus 1. That's what I was hoping to do. But when I raise powers to powers, 